Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a mirror upgrade for our 2018 VW Golf R Mark 7.5. So this is for adding on or upgrading to power folding mirrors with puddle lights. Um, and then we're also gonna do, since we're gonna have these mirrors apart, what we call the uh, dynamic blinkers. So this video is really about uh, upgrading something that the US models don't have. So the US models do not have power folding mirrors. They do have power mirrors, which means that the mirror itself is power, the glass, you can move it up and down, left and right. Um, and it, they also are heated. These mirrors on the Golf R's include the driver assistance package, which has the blind spot monitoring um, icon in, in the mirror glass that lights up when somebody's in your blind spot. So it has all those features. The one feature it doesn't have that the European models and some other countries do have is to be able to fold the mirror in uh, with a motor from the inside of the car or when you lock it or unlock it. And um, the reason I wanted to get that is because I have a one car garage. It's a little tight and it'd be nice if I could just fold the mirrors up before I actually drove in. And so since it is a VW option in other cars outside of the US, uh, we're gonna add it. So we're gonna swap our mirrors out with power folding mirrors and then do the coding and the programming on the computer modules to allow it to do its thing. And like I said, we're gonna upgrade the blinkers on the back of the mirrors from the standard factory uh, lights to the uh, dynamic ones, which if you're not familiar with those is basically just that they, uh, the light sweeps across in like a sweeping motion uh, as it blinks. Um, so that's what our uh, goal is and um, I've had these parts sitting around for probably a year and a half now and so with COVID-19 I guess there is one little uh, bright spot which is it gives you time to do all these projects you've been putting off forever so we're going to get that going. Alright so the first piece obviously you're going to need is the mirrors. So you're going to need the uh, power folding mirrors left and right. So this is um, how they come. Um, the only difference between this mirror and the one that's on the car is there's a motor right here to be able to twist the mirror back and forth. That's about it. Everything else is the same. It actually comes with another uh, turn signal light bar already installed in it. This is a factory Volkswagen mirror and part number here. I got this from um, E. ACCA.com, which is uh, a company uh, in Latvia, actually, that is very well known in the VW circles for factory parts. So they get all their parts from VW directly and then they ship them to the US. Sure is when you get your mirror, you make sure you get the right one with or without driver assistance. So with driver assistance, we'll have this extra wire right here, which goes to the blind spot mine. You're also gonna need a replacement mirror switch. So the switch itself is exactly the same that's in the car right now. No difference except it has this little extra uh, position over here where it actually is basically allowing you to fold the mirrors in and out. And that's it. So again this is a factory VW part, not aftermarket. And then we're going to actually do this extra little thing here which is we're going to add on this LED um, sweeping uh, blinker, so they call it dynamic mirror indicator, which is going to replace that bar right here on the mirror with this one. And so what happens is when your turn, when your turn signal's on, it just sort of sweeps across as it's uh, indicating that you're turning there. And this is all LED. So this is actually made by Osram, and this is the actual uh, part that you would get if you went to your VW dealer and got this optional accessory. Same thing, they, that's where VW actually gets these from. And they come in two editions. They have white and black. So the white edition basically means it has the clear plastic and the black means it's a smoked gray plastic uh, instead of the clear and that sort of like blends in with your mirror a little more. I selected the white just to keep it the same as the factory look but they have two different choices. All right, so there it is. That's what it looks like from the factory by default. It just has that blinking right there. One other thing to note is on the uh, inside of the mirror, it also has this little light right here that blinks when it's on. And so a lot of the aftermarket ones, if you buy a cheaper version of it, you don't get the Osrams, then you won't get that little light. It'll just be a, 
a blank spot and it doesn't actually light up. So that's another thing to consider when you're picking your parts. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is get our door panel off, obviously, so we get access to the wiring and also the bolts that hold the mirror onto the car. So before you start, do yourself a favor, just put some uh, towels and protect your door sill and your seat, your leather seats, because uh, you know there will be tools flying around, things will be moving, and you know why scratch your car? So we're gonna do the same thing when we get to the mirror removal. On the outside, we're gonna actually just tape a little blanket on the side of the door itself to protect it. You never know what's gonna happen. It's always those things that you don't expect and then something falls or moves and then you damage the f paint finish on your car or something like that. So do yourself a favor, take the extra two minutes it takes and just put down some uh, protective coverings on everything. All right, so to get the door panel off, it's, it's not that hard on the uh, Mark 7 7.5s. So there's this panel here on the door pull that has to come off. There's a screw behind there. There's a screw right down here right below the uh, bottom of the uh, thing, uh, the um, armrest right here. So these are two uh, torque screws you have to get out. And then after you get those out, there will be some clips about here, here, and I think there's three on this side, or into three. You'll pull them out, and then once you get the clips out, you have to sort of push up on the end here, because there's a clip that goes down into the body. <laughs> And then you'll just sort of work your way up and then pull it out. Now, when you're pulling it out, you're not going to pull it all the way out. So you're just going to pull it out an inch or so until you can get all the wires disconnected because this light bar going right across here, um, you can easily uh, damage the wires and then that'll be all ruined. So you don't want to, you know, mess anything up. Uh, there is a bunch of wires we have to disconnect. It's the light bar wire. There's going to be the wire for the mirror switch. There's the power mirror down here. So there's a bunch of wires that we have to make sure we disconnect, okay? But uh, first thing you're gonna do is over here on this door pull, there's gonna be a little um, sort of indentation right up here where you can get your uh, tool in. And when you do that, then it'll allow you to pop this off. And so once you get that popped off, you'll see the screw. And then um, we're gonna use our, you know, plastic door tools. But whenever I use those tools, even though they're plastic, just so I don't mar anything. I always like use a little very thin microfiber cloth. I actually wrap it around the end and then sometimes I'll even put uh, painter's tape right on the edge that I'm prying against. So let's say I was prying against right here. I'd put some tape just as an extra precaution to make sure nothing gets smart. You don't have to if you don't want to, but if you want everything to go back perfect and there's no marks or anything like that, scratches in case something slips, doing those extra little uh, things will uh, prevent that. So let's get this off. We'll have to get those two screws out. And then on the bottom of the door panel, there is a little indentation at the bottom right here. And inside there, there is a plastic nut that you turn a quarter, turn and that will release the bottom right here. So it's just like a plastic, uh, uh, looks like a bolt actually. I think it's uh, 10 millimeter and then uh, you just turn that a quarter turn and that'll get you where you need to go. So let me uh, get the, um, the uh, camera set up and the tools and we'll take these things apart. All right, so here's our, uh, I put a piece of tape here. Here's our little groove that we're gonna put our tool in and we're just gonna pry this off. Now, there's a clip right here that has to sort of be pushed in to get it out. You wanna be careful, just take it very easy here because this can break off and so when you're prying it up, you kind of almost want to twist it at the same time so that you're pushing this plastic towards the back of the door and then uh, it'll release that clip at the top. And so when you put it in here, just go really slow, really gently till you hear things starting to pop and they should pop right off. Okay, so there it is popped off. Here is the trim piece. You can see there's that uh, sort of clip I was talking about at the top. You want to make sure you don't break that but it'll pop off. And the other thing is when you're taking these pieces off, sometimes they'll pop off and they'll fly across the uh, car. So again, that's why you have all these protective things down here. So first of all, you protect this if it flies off. And then two, you're protecting anything that it could hit when it's coming off. All right, so here is our uh, torque screw, which is inside of here. Let's get the light up here a little better so you can see the torque screw inside there we have to take off and then there's going to be one down here in this pocket same thing i'm going to take that one out and 
then that'll loosen those parts of it here. So let me go get a Torx. All right, so there's my uh, screw that came out of there. It's a T30, so a Torx 30. So you just gotta make sure you have a um, tool for that. And again, you're gonna take it out the top here and the bottom here, and that's it. So next piece is to do that quarter turn on the bottom of the uh, door panel. So we're gonna get a 10 millimeter uh, wrench. All right, so there's our nut right there. I've got my 10 millimeter wrench on it, and we're really just gonna turn it a quarter turn, uh, and that's pretty much it. And it's gonna, you're gonna see the uh, edges of it. You're gonna line it up vertically, and that will release it from the door panel. So I only turned it about an eighth there, but I'll, I'm holding the camera, so I'll finish it. But you're just gonna turn it a quarter turn, and that will release it from the door panel. All right, so now that we got that released, uh, so we have about, I think there's two clips on this side and three on the other side. And so we're just gonna get our trim tool underneath here. Again, we're gonna protect it with a rag, and we're just gonna pop these out. And once they're released, then we're gonna show you how to get the top uh, released from the door. Um, if you have a little stool or something that you can put underneath here, that's great. Um, I think I'm gonna get just a cardboard box, but basically when you get the door panel released from the door, you wanna rest it on something so it's not hanging and pulling on all the wires while you're getting everything disconnected. So let me uh, just uh, get those out and then we'll um, put the little box down and then I'll show you how to disconnect the wires. All right, so I got all the clips loose here. You can see the, uh, the door panel is uh, loose from the door. And so what you're gonna do is just push it up in the rear so this is loose and you're releasing that clip in the back here. You're gonna do the same for the front and just sort of slowly work it up until it's loose from the door and you can pull it out. And then you're gonna put your box down at the bottom here to support it and then we'll show you how to disconnect. All right, so we got our door panel off, so let's just talk about the connectors. Uh, first of all, you got the door latch connector right up here at the top, okay? So this one uh, just pops right off. Um, you'll see on the end here, there'll be a, a like on the door itself. It'll clip right into this portion right here, and you just push down and it'll pop right out. The second one is the window uh, switch. This is the harder one. You have to get a little screwdriver and you have to pull this sort of purple down. So it's, it's up in the locked position and then you're gonna push it, you're gonna just pry it down. Then when you pry it down, then you can actually push down on this tab right here right in the middle and that will let you pull it out so actually that's going to be in this in the uh, inside the switch here so the piece that you're actually gonna let me get a screwdriver here the piece that you're actually going to push down on is going to be right here so there's a little tab right here so you pull that purple thing out pull it down that'll unlock it and then they'll allow you to push this little tab in and it should come right out when you get this one off, you have a lot more room to play with <coughs> uh, to get the door panel off. These three at the top here are very simple. This one has a squeeze clips on the side here. So this comes right out. This one here has just a push clip right on the end. So that comes right out. And this uh, one also has a push clip right on the end. So that comes right out too. So same thing, you just push down on that little clip right there. This one here, which is for the uh, alarm lamp on the door, is the hardest one to get out, and it's also the most fragile one, so be very careful with it. But if you disconnect everything else, you'll have a lot more room to pull the door panel out and then get to this one. This one actually has a, um, a hook right here on the thing, and so there's nothing to push on the connector itself. You're actually gonna push on the receiving part of it right here and so you're going to actually push this little tab right here out not in so you're going to pull it out it's very uh, soft it'll move immediately it won't be hard but I couldn't figure it out at first so this one's a little different so you push this out and then it'll slide right out so that'll be the this one and the door switch are the hardest ones so all right so now that we have our door panel out we can kind of take a look at what we need to do here so first of all there's our two uh, big torx bolts that we're going to use to remove the mirror itself 
And then this is the wiring, this is the control module here that we're going to disconnect from. So this white grommet that's coming through here is the, our two wires or two connectors here for the mirror itself. So this is what's on the new mirror. So for these, we're just going to simply disconnect these and then um, pull this through the door. Now we're going to do a couple different things here. So first of all, you have this grommet, which is just going to push through the door. That's no problem. And that, this grommet is on the new one. Um, if you look at the position of this tab right here, that'll tell you kind of where you want it twisted or positioned when you get the new one in. So you might want to get your camera, just take a picture so you know and you're, you remember exactly the position of everything. The second thing we have to worry about is another little uh, connect tab right here. Right above this green one, There's it's hard to see in the camera here probably, but there's one right underneath here. And that one is basically the wiring harness going back behind the door and this holds it against the door. So you got to make sure that, that gets back in there or your wiring can get tangled up in your window mechanism, which you don't want. Um, so what you want to going to do is in order to get that back in there, you're going to have to get your hands back in there. So you're going to take this grommet out right here, just push it through the door so it's out of the way and you get your finger in there. And then once you get your new harness in, you're going to be able to get your finger back there and just push that and clip this in. So it's, it's really important that this little uh, clip here, that little green one right there is through the door and it's fastened. All right. All right, so before we actually do that, we gotta go up to the mirror and start taking some of that apart um, before we pull it off. It'll be easier to get the mirror glass out and everything else when the mirror is attached to the car, trying to do it off the car, because doing it off the car, then you don't have any leverage with anything. So we're gonna take that apart first. The other thing we're gonna do is once we disconnect all these um, connectors here, we're actually gonna attach a piece of uh, you can attach fishing line or string or whatever you want to use But what you want to do is attach it before you pull this out so that you're taking this and Pulling it up through the channel and then when you put your new one in you're going to use that same string to pull it back through So that it's going through the right channel because if you don't get it in the right channel in the back of the door here Which you're not going to be able to see then you what will happen is your wiring is going to get tangled up in your uh, door mechanisms, so we don't want that to happen. All right, so let me uh, get up top here And we're going to take the mirror apart. First. All right, so let's look at our door panel So you can see here are our uh, spots for our clips. There's one two. This one's missing uh, That's the quarter turn one. This is the uh, one one missing Okay, so you've got and then there's one at the top here, All right? So three on this side two on the back side. So what do they look like? Well, they look like all right, I did want to talk about the door panel clips just because uh, a lot of people don't know how to use these correctly. So Volkswagen has these really cool door panel clips that are not like your traditional ones where they just sort of uh, were Christmas tree fasteners that sort of popped in the holes in the door and out. These clips actually are much more ingenious than most standard clips. So if you notice, I've got a clip here on the left here where you can see this white piece is sort of protruding out, it's extended, and on the right it isn't. So the one on the right is the way it should look when you have this attached to the door panel and you're about to put it in into the door, like attach it to the door. This is what it would look like when it comes out, uh, when after you pull the panel off. Now, it'll only look this way if you use the correct tool to get the door panel off. If you just sort of pry on the door panel and yank it off with your hands, um, it may not come out. They may be stuck in still inside the door itself, okay? And what a lot of people do is they'll take a trim tool and they'll pry right underneath this gasket to pop it out of the hole. That's the wrong way to do it because you want to release it because that's what this system does. It, it releases and locks. So it's basically lock and unlock on these fasteners. So this is the locked position, this is the unlocked, and the difference is these little, these, these four little fingers uh, that are on here basically expand out once it's locked, and so when you push it through, okay? So this actually clicks back and forth, and so in order to uh, get it out of the door, do not put your trim tool underneath the gasket to sort of pop it out of the door. You're forcing it out the hole. 
what you want to do is put your trim tool right here where my screwdriver is and then use that as leverage you you need a trim tool that you know has a little sort of fork in it and you can use the leverage against the door and you're going to want to pop out this section right here okay you're not trying to pop out the whole thing you're just trying to pop this section out so that it pulls the plunger back basically and it'll release it from the door um, it'll pop right out of the door when you do that as soon as you pop it as soon as it like you know comes to the unlock position it'll pop right out of the door so what's nice about these things is they'll if you yank on the door panel these will actually release because they're flexible in the back here they sort of have a, like a spiral flexible back they'll pop right out of the door panel so you don't damage the door panel um, but if they're stuck in the door it means you didn't you didn't use the right tool now there is a special tool if you use it it puts it right in the right spot and it'll unlock these and the door panel will come right off what's nice about these is that when you're putting the door panel back on obviously they're going to be in this position right they're going to be in the the uh, the closed position this one right here which is basically the unlocked position you're going to mount this to your door panel so this slot right here is what slides into the groove on the door panel and then what you're going to do is when you get your door panel all lined up you're just going to gently push in and then as soon as the uh, rubber part you know lands on the actual door itself if you just push a little bit harder just a little bit more not much it's just a small little push you'll hear this clicking and the click is where this is actually going into the locked position and it snaps right in. So they're really cool fasteners. You shouldn't have to buy new ones because um, when you yank it off, even if you don't have the right tool, as long as you remove it using this as your slot that you're putting a tool in to pull it out, then you'll be good and it'll unlock and come right off. If you try to jam your tool between the washer and this, you're then you could damage the fastener because you're you're forcing it out when it's in its locked position. So, just FYI about these fasteners on the Mark 7.5s here. Um, they're really cool and they're totally reusable as you do the lock and the unlock positions on them. But a lot of people don't understand how they work. They're not the traditional fasteners you used to probably seeing on most door panels. And then on the door itself here, all we're going to really have to do is switch out the mirror switch. And that's what we're going to do right now. So over here on this side, this mirror switch has to be swapped out with the new mirror switch. So we just have to pop it out of the door panel. And so you can see the mirror switch is right up in this section right here. There's three clips, one, two, actually two clips, and then a third one up here, this one right here. So five total, looks like, let me say one, two, three, actually four, four total. And you're just gonna, those are just spring loaded. So you're just gonna take some pressure and push out and then that whole assembly should come out. And then we're gonna swap out the, uh, the mirror switch. All right, so there's our old mirror switch popped out. If I look on the back here, you can see there's the, uh, the four white clips. So all we gotta do is get the actual door lock switch out of here because we need to transfer this over to the new one. And it's basically the same thing. You're gonna take your screwdriver and you're just going to pry out this way and this way on each side while pushing through and then it'll, it'll pop right out of here. Alright, and there you have it. There's our new switch in the uh, door panel and it just has the extra feature right here for folding the mirrors. So that's all you have to do on the door panel besides reinstall it. Uh, so now we're going to go out to the mirror and, and get the mirror glass out, the mirror cover off, and then we'll take the mirror off the door. All right, so we got everything prepped on this side of the door. And so what we did is we tied, we actually tied a string to this um, connector bundle that's attached to the mirror and it goes down to a big roll there so it won't be able to get through the door. And I actually taped it up with some painter's tape just to make it smoother to go in and out through the door so the connectors don't get caught. Um, you can see I pushed the grommet through the door here. I also pushed the one above it through the door so later on we can get our fingers back there and you can see right here, I pushed in the little connector that's holding the wiring harness to the inside of the door. So from the inside standpoint, we're ready to pull this through. All right, so next we gotta get the mirror glass out. So first of all, you're gonna just push the mirror down um, so that it's basically in its lowest tilt position at the bottom. 
and then we're just going to pry it out. Now there's a big circular piece of plastic that's mounted on the back here that has about four or five clips and that's what you're disconnecting from the main uh, motor base on the inside. I put some painters tape up here to protect the edge uh, just because even though I'm replacing the mirror I want to save it and I'm also going to use uh, a glass a cloth piece of cloth here between the glass and I'm going to start on this side basically and you're just going to sort of pry it out and pop it out and it comes out not too bad uh, you can see I've got it loose on the top here and I'm just going to continue on the bottom and you just kind of have to work it out until you get it completely loose from the the mirror backing. We're almost there. We have our mirror disconnected now. So now what we have to do is disconnect these wires here. So we got a blue on the outside and a brown on the inside. Now this is the wires for the mirror, for the heater. These I don't think matter as far as their, uh, which ones go on which, but again, you just uh, pull them off. Just be careful with them. They're really uh, thin wires and you don't want to break them. They'll just wiggle off like that. And then the other wire you have here is this one here, which is going to the blind spot monitoring indicator. So there's just, the wire is just in these little looms. So you're just gonna gently pop them out of the looms around the corner there. And then you'll just wiggle this out. It should come right out fairly easily like that. And now you have your mirror glass and you didn't break it, okay? And so that's all it is to take that out. Now, if I was taking off the cover here, there are some clips here that you're gonna just push on with your trim tool and then that will release the, the back cover if you had to take that out. All right, so all we're gonna do now is take out these two Torx bolts right here. They're 30 also, just like it was for the doors. So we're just gonna take these out. And then if you have another person, great. They can hold the mirror. If not, you'll need, you should t really hold it while you're taking out the last bolt. Then what you're going to do is just sort of pull it out and fish this all through and the string should come through with it so that you can get it back in the exact right channel. All right, so there's our old mirror off the car. Uh, the hardest part tr getting this through is this connector, this big fat one on the end. You can sort of have like just keep pulling and tugging a little bit gently as you get it through, but you'll eventually get it through the door. And in the door now the string is on the outside of the car too, so I'll be able to fish it back through. So. Before we uh, put the new mirror on the car, which is going to be this one right here, uh, what we have to do is first switch out the blinker. So we're going to put in our sweeping dynamic blinker instead of the factory one. And then we're going to put on our new mirror cap. So first we have to do is remove this one right here. You can see there's just a connector on the end here, very simple to get off. And then there's a torque screw and a torque screw two torque screws, and then I'll just pop off and pop in. So let's go get the uh, screwdriver, we'll get this off, and then we'll go and uh, pull out our new ones. All right, so to get this uh, blinker out, what you need to do is, first of all, you have to take this front cover off because the blinker uh, end of it goes through that cover. So you can't get this out until you take this off. There's two T10 Torx right here on the front, and this will pop right off the front. Then there's a Torx here and a Torx here. This one is a little hard to get to. You kind of have to go in and like at an angle when you're going with your Torx driver, but it'll still fit and you'll be able to get in there as long as you have a T10. If you have a sort of a bit on the end of a uh, ratchet wrench, that might be too big. So you, you're gonna need probably a, uh, an actual driver. Um, and then it'll just pop right out and that's it. And so we're just gonna pop the new one in and do the reverse order. So let me get that installed. Okay, so there's our uh, final installed mirror. So I'm not going to run through the video on how to put it all back together. Obviously, everything is in the reverse order that you took it apart. So just get everything back together the same way you did. And um, again, when you're fishing the line through, just use that string to pull it through gently until you get it through. Make sure all the clips are in, in place and uh, you'll button it all back up. So now we're gonna get to the coating portion that we need to get it to uh, actually work. So let's go and uh, go ahead and do that portion. All right, so now we got to code the mirrors to the car so the car knows that it has folding mirrors now. If you can notice on our mirror and wiper settings menu, um, there's nothing in here that shows anything about folding mirrors, right? So 
that's what we need to do next. So we're going to connect our OBD11 device and uh, then code the car. So let's get it connected and um, I'll show you the settings to code the mirrors. All right, so we're gonna we got our tool connected. Uh, we've already done our backup of the module, so we're just gonna scroll down to the driver's door, which is 42, and then um, we're gonna go into long coding. And what we're looking for is um, folding mirror. So you can see there it says uh, mirror folding not installed. So we're just going to click that, click installed, say OK, and then green check mark. And then it'll say coding accepted. Okay. And so here it is uh, mirror comfort folding. And we're going to make that active, say OK, hold down the green check mark and it'll say coding accepted. So those are the two um, settings on the driver's side door so we're going to repeat it for the passenger side. Oh and there's one more that you want to activate actually there's three on each of the door modules. One is the this is the front field light which is the puddle light that is part of the new mirror so there were no puddle lights on the old mirror so this one has a puddle light so you're going to take front field light and make that active and then that's going to um, activate those little puddle lights when you unlock the car it will um, light up those little lights underneath the mirror down to the ground okay so now that we have that simple coating done to activate the folding mirrors all that's going to happen so far because we're not finished coating is that in the control here on the um, driver's side door when we move the knob to the folding mirror position, the mirrors will fold in. So, um, you notice on this mirror, I don't have my mirror cap on yet, but um, on the driver's side mirror here, if I zoom out a little bit, <clears throat> and I just turn this knob here to the folding position, then you notice it folds in. And it'll stay in no matter what. I open the door, I lock the door, it's going to stay in that position. And then when I get in the car and I'm ready to leave, I can turn this back to the regular left position and both mirrors will uh, unfold. So that's all you need to do to fold and unfold. However, if you want to get the extra options to work with uh, locking the door, unlocking the door, and also to have it on your menu in your um, entertainment system, the uh, info system, all right, so to get the menu items and for the remote control, we're going to go to Central Electrics here. So, I'm going to go into Central Electrics. We're going to have to first go into um, Security Access. And then we got to type in the uh, security code, which in this case is uh, 31347. Alright, then once you get here, you're going to go into Adaptation. And so we got to find an adaptation for the mirror adjustment, and it's uh, like Spiegel versus something like that. So you can actually in scroll down if you want to, but if you do a search, it's probably easier if you do there, and it, it actually comes up right there. So this is what we want right here. So now we have all our settings within this adaptation. So the first one we're looking for is something called the same name only with the word modus at the end. So it's Funk's uh, Spiegel Lank Lappen Modus, which basically means remote mirror folding mode. And so um, we're just going to, you know, right there it is. You can see it says <coughs> Funk blah 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 by convenience operation via remote control key so we're gonna and again you're just gonna verify you got the right names because these long German names get really messy so just make sure you have the right one and it says by convenience operation and we're gonna change it to put by lookup command via remote control and say OK and then we're gonna save that alright so that's the first setting the second setting we're gonna do is um, Again, we can go up here to the top. Well, actually, we'll just scroll. We're looking for one where um, 
Let's get the camera to focus here. Um, for the menus, so it's every, it starts with menus, Strong, Funk, Spiegel, Anklappen. So basically, it's menu control for the remote fold mirror, so that we can see the menu inside the infotainment system. So um, it's actually this one right here. Uh, yep, that's it. And we want to make this active. So this is going to add it to the menu. And then there's another one uh, for remote mirror fold, which is just Funks, same thing. So Funks, Bingo, Lankin. So it should be a short one here, which is uh, this one right here. And that one is the one that is going to give us the remote mirror fold. So we're going to make that active. Now there is a, there's other menu uh, things in here that you can do for the little mirror lowering when you um, put it in reverse and things like that. I'm not going to do those right this second. So there's one other mirror, one called mirror collapses when relocking. Uh, so that one is like speak or locked in bay and then there's a Vider Verlung or something like that. So, and it, let's see if we can st start the top here. I think it's this one right here. And again, I'm just always checking the name, make sure I got the right one. So this should be the one, Spiegel, Locken, Bay, and then the, so mirror collapses when relocking. So this is, we're gonna make this active too. Okay, so we got our adaptations accepted here. So we've got, uh, think four of them that we've uh, set now so that should be all we need and then we're gonna give it a try with the remote now what should happen is we should see it on the menu here so let me actually turn on the menu here we might have to restart it but we'll see here in a second we'll go down to mirrors and wipers all right so now we have some extra menu items so I got fold in when locking check box right here so you need to check that off if you want it to work, right? So we're gonna check that one off right there. All right, so now we can test it out and see what happens. All right, so um, now we're gonna check it out. So first we're gonna do it with the handle. So when we touch the handle to lock the car, the mirrors fold. And if I touch the handle again to unlock the car, the mirrors unfold. So with the handle it works, so now we're going to try it with the uh, key fob. So we're going to lock it, mirrors fold, unlock it, mirrors unfold. So the one thing you have to keep in mind is the position of this switch. So this is the manual portion of it, right? So if you have it in the Fold, the uh, position here where it's marked with the, fold, the mirror fold, right? If you close the car door and you even if you lock it or unlock it manually, you notice the mirror is not folding and unfolding like it did before. The switch has to be actually in the left or right mirror position. And then if you lock it, it'll fold and unlock it it'll unfold. So the position of the mirror makes a difference too, okay? Now let's go into the menu. We're gonna go down to mirrors and wipers. And we're gonna uncheck that, fold when locking, okay? And then we'll shut off the car. So now even if we lock it with our hand whatever it's not going to do anything. If I try to use the key fob do the same thing you notice they won't fold. Okay 
So the nice part about adding it to the menu is you have control of when you want it to fold or not to fold if for some reason you wanted to turn it off, okay? But one of the keys, of course, is to make sure that that knob is in the right position, okay? So if you fold your mirrors when you're coming into your garage, um, then when you get out of the car, then you want to turn them back to the L position right there, and then they'll lock when you actually are I mean, they'll fold when you're actually in the car and in the garage already. All right, so here are our settings to get our um, folding mirrors coated on the car. So, to get just the mirrors to work with the switch that's on the door panel and nothing else, you'll need to do uh, these settings at the top here. So, you're going to do one for each door. So, you're going to go, once you get your tool connected, you're going to go into door electronics, driver side. Uh, long coating and then there'll be four um, settings that you'll need to change. So the first one is mirror folding. You're going to change that from not installed to installed. The second is going to be uh, mirror comfort folding. You're going to set that from inactive to active. That is just to be able to um, control it with the switch in the door panel, not with the key fob or anything like that. Um, and then you're going to turn on the puddle lights because these new mirrors come with little puddle lights on the bottom of them that uh, light up when you unlock the car. So at nighttime, it's sort of a little pathway towards the car if you happen to be outside or something like that. So um, you're going to turn the front field light to active from inactive and you're going to turn the uh, setting that says turn off front field light with the folded mirror because you don't want the light... Um, being on when the mirror folds up because then it would be actually pointing inside the car. So you're going to change that from inactive to active. So those four settings. And then you're going to do the same thing for the um, passenger side. So you're going to go into door electronics passenger side and do the exact same settings. So setting all those settings will get you all set up so that you will um, be able to control it with the uh, control on the door panel on the inside of the car just by flipping that little knob and it also will activate the puddle lights on the bottom. Uh, now if you want to control the mirrors with the key fob then you'll need to do some additional settings and so in order to control it with the key fob this is a different section so you're gonna have to go into central electronics uh, security access and then you're gonna type in 31347 as the security code and then you're going to go under adaptations and you're going to find the adaptation called uh, Spiegel Verstuhlung. So if you just have, if you have the OBD11 tool, you can actually just type it in the search bar and it'll come right up. Otherwise, you can scroll and find it. And that is German for mirror adjustment. That's what it means. So that's the adaptation you want to go into. Once you're inside that adaptation, then you'll just have to set um, four settings inside there. And then you'll be set and you'll be able to, to control the mirrors with your key fob and also the door handles on the Golf R's if you have the Kessie system that has the, uh, you know, the touch door handles that lock and unlock the car. So the first one is that one you see right here. starts with Funk and then Spiegel, Lap Lapcom, Modus, whatever it says there. And that basically means that um, you're going to change that setting, which is the remote mirror folding mode, that's what that stands for, you're going to change that from a setting that says by convenience operation via remote control key and you're going to change it to the one you see here which is by lookup command via remote control key. Okay. The reason is, is we're going to activate the menu and this is going to allow you to turn it on and off by the car menu inside the car. Uh, the second setting that you're going to uh, set is that one called Spiegel Lackham Lep Bay Vider Verlung or whatever it's called there and you're going to change that to active and that one stands for mirror collapses when relocking so that's when that's how the mirror will fold when you lock the car and the next one is the um, uh, menu Sturung Funk Spiegel Anklappen which again you're setting to active from inactive and that one is the thing that actually adds the menu item on your menu in your infotainment system. So when you turn that on and you make it active, you'll see the menu item will show up in your infotainment system to check on and off whether you want to have remote control with the fob or not for the mirrors. And then the last setting is that Funk Spiegel Lacken Lincoln Lappen, 
and then that is again set to active and that's just that is translated into remote mirror fold so that setting has to be active in order for them to re, uh, fold remotely so if you change those four settings then you'll be able to fold and unfold your mirrors with either your key fob or by touching the door handles on the car. It will also activate it if you, um, say you unlock your car and then you don't open the door. If you know the uh, car, you know that it will automatically within 30 seconds relock the car if it sees that nobody has actually opened the door. So when you unlock your car and then the mirror unfolds, if the car should lock by itself again because you never opened a door, the mirror will fold when it relocks the car. So all that still works when you have all these four settings set. So these are all the main settings for the folding mirrors to make them active with not only the switch inside the car, but also with the key fob and the door handles and also turn on the puddle lights, which are a new feature that you don't have on the old mirrors that you replaced. All right, so here's our installed mirror. We've got our new uh, dynamic LEDs. So let me uh, turn those on so you can see what they look like compared to what it looked like before. So you can see they uh, sweep across as they're blinking and they're really bright. They're actually brighter than the factory um, uh, turn signals that were on the mirrors before. So pretty cool and I'm happy with them. All right, so let's just quickly demonstrate the puddle light. So the mirror is folded right now. So let's pretend that you're coming out at night and you're unlocking the car so you can get into it. So when you hit the unlock and the mirror actually unfolds, and then you'll see the little puddle light will pop on. And go. So that's the little light that goes down on the ground here to give you sort of light, little light to where the car is and the door and stuff like that. So that's the additional feature you turned on with the coating and comes with these uh, upgraded mirrors. All right, so here are the uh, parts for our project, just uh, for some part numbers. Again, these are the folding mirrors with the driver assistance. So uh, I'm not sure if the left and right numbers are reversed, but you know, those are the two numbers. Um, and then those are the VW part numbers. And then the mirror switch VW part number. And then for the Osram dynamic turn signal indicators, that is the uh, model number for that. And that's it for the parts. All right, so that's uh, the end of our uh, project here. So we got our uh, mirrors all finished. If we uh, unlock the car, unfold. Notice a little puddle light will come on in a second there. So we got the puddle lights working. We got the mirror unfolds working. And then we have our dynamic blinkers that we also have in there. So I hope you enjoyed the video and it's helpful with the coding portion of it. There, it's pretty, pretty straightforward install. Um, and I'll see you next time.